bottom line for me is that I just feel like uh, I'm hearing lots of pastors and missional leaders talking about uh, the need to join God in the mission. They talk about that all the time. We've got to follow God, join God, uh, be missional, be sent. That language is quite, quite widespread these days. Uh, and it sounds good. It kind of has the ring of truth about it. Let's go join God and what he's doing in the neighborhood. Let's find out what God is doing and, and go and join him. But when you press people, there's still a uncertainty about what exactly that means. I think most people are, are still asking, give me a blueprint, give me a map. And I would say over and over, like, I don't think there's a map. I don't, I think there's a direction, I think there is a, um, there's wisdom, there's history, but I don't think there's a map, and I think that's why it's vital for us to be connected to the Spirit so closely that when the Spirit moves, we go. So in effect, it's a book about how you join God and what He's doing in the world, but it's not just the theory or the, the broad brush strokes of that, it really is drilling into, well, exactly what does that look like? in uh, particular places that you find yourselves in. So as soon as you start to talk about joining God, you know, in the world, people start to think, oh, maybe we should run a, a, a soup kitchen or a feeding program. Oh, I know, we should do some stuff for, for preschoolers and young mothers. Oh, I know, we should run a, you know, an, an afternoon church service for families. Or there are things that churches have been doing for a long time all around the world. Uh, are they? exactly what God is doing in your neighborhood? Not necessarily. You know, those are helpful and healthy, but if we're so married to our vision that uh, we can't imagine another, another way, we forget that God's ways are far beyond us and that often what the Spirit is doing is very much outside of our, um, our paradigms and our models. I think we still had this sort of pressure to posture ourselves as the main characters. When we are not, and it's not about us following some kind of formula that's been given to us or that somebody else is telling us to do, but this true confidence and belief that Jesus is the main character. The Spirit is birthing, and um, as I have explored this metaphor of not only what God is doing or the work God is doing, what God is accomplishing, but rather what is God birthing, then I got started imagining what it looks like. What does that mean for us? Um, how do we attend to the birth? Which the midwife is, is a, a really, for me, a very inspiring way of um, viewing our role as missional people. The midwife doesn't say to the delivering mother, oh look, get out of the way, I'll, I'll do this for you. Uh, she can't, it's, it's the mother's work. In the same way as I think the reign of God is God's work, the question then is how can I assist, not do? How can I uh, attend, not take over or control? So it comes with a heck of a lot of faith, a lot of inspiration, a lot of innovation, and this willingness to let go, like almost just throw into the wind what you think a birth experience should be in order to embrace what it's going to be. And even acknowledge that what it's going to be is more magnificent than what you could have crafted.